Hallelujah. Can we give God some praise today? Come on, he's worthy. Come on, hallelujah. Bless your name. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. From the rising of the sun, hallelujah, to the going down of the same sun, our God is worthy to be praised. Do I have a witness in here? Hallelujah. Do I have somebody, hallelujah, that will declare that God is good, that God is great, that God is good, Woo! that God is great, that God is wonderful, that he's strong and mighty, that he is a healer, that he is a keeper, that he is a deliverer. We thank you, oh God, for your presence on today. So Holy Spirit, come now and bless us. Come Holy Spirit, come now and see about us. Come Holy Spirit, come and dwell in this place. Come Holy Spirit, move like you want to move. Come Holy Spirit, we declaring hallelujah that we are the sanctuary of God. The holy living temple. God, whatever you desire to do, do it in us all today, God. We magnify you. We lift you high. And we honor your presence. So make us fertile ground that the word would go forth, God. That praise, that worship reach you, Lord God. And let it put a smile on your face today, God. For we, your sons and daughters, are gathered here. Hallelujah and your presence to bless you, the one and only true and living God. Bless us, lift us, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we pray in faith, and it is so, amen. Come and put your hands together in the house, hallelujah. We thank you for joining us this morning in Mount Zion, Avery Zion Church, hallelujah, where Reverend Claude Schubert is the pastor. Our morning hymn, my faith looks up to thee. O Lamb of Calvary. We worship you, God. Him two four, him four sixty eight. Everybody all over the world, here we go. My faith looks up to thee, my faith. Let us stand. Thou land of Calvary. Savior divine, now hear me while I pray. Now hear me. Take all of my guilt away. Yeah. Oh, let me from this day. Be holy thine. Verse 2, my faith, may thy rich impart strength to my fainting heart. My zeal inspire as, as thou hast died for me. fire while life dark maze I tread and grease around me that's it people of God just sound good be thou my God big darkness turn the day 
Wipe sorrow's tears away. Sorrow. Nor let me ever stray. Ever stray. From the from the assembly. When in life transit tree. When death's cold, sullen stream shall over me roll. Bless Savior thin in love. Savior thin, fear and distrust remove. Oh, bear me a safer bond. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My faith looks up to thee, O Lamb of Calvary. Hallelujah. We come to lift up the name of the Lord. How many come to lift up the name of the Lord this morning? Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come to lift up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Make some noise in the house. Let's sing praises, praises. Let's up the name of the Lord. Let's sing praises. Let us exalt his name. Lift up the name of the Lord. And sing praises. Sing praises. That's it. We come to lift up the name. We come to lift up the name of the Lord. And sing praises. Praises. Lift up the name of the Lord. And sing praises. Praises. Oh, magnify. Let us exalt his name. Everybody, lift up the name. And sing praises. Sing praises. Come on, say it again. We come to lift up the name. I don't know what you but he's worthy. He's worthy of the glory today. Lift up the name. There's nobody like him. Hallelujah. He's strong and mighty. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify. Let us exalt his name together. Lift up the name. And sing praise. And sing praises on today. Can we say it one more time? Lift up the name. Of the Lord and sing praises. There's nobody like him. He's a good God on today. And sing praises. That's it. Oh, magnify the Lord and let us exalt him. That's you and I. Oh, lift up the name and sing praises. Sing praises. Sing praises. Sing praises. Here we go. Make some noise in this place. He's worthy. He's worthy. High and lifted up is our God. High and lifted up. Come on, high and lifted up. Make some noise. Come on, spread us higher. Oh, we lift you today. Come on and lift you higher. There's nobody like you. You're so good to us. 
Come on and lift them. Two on them out, Tom. Everybody. Everybody sing your part. Come on and lift them. Higher. Come on and lift him. All the tennis join us higher. Higher. Yeah. Come on and lift him. With all that you have. Come on and lift him. Higher, higher. Declare that the Lord is high and lifted. Come on and lift him. Higher and higher. Come on and lift him. Yeah. Higher and higher. Come on and lift. Come on and lift. Come on and lift. Come on and lift. Higher. Come on and give him praise in the house. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Lift him above your circumstances. Hallelujah. Lift him above what you see right now. Come on and lift Jesus higher. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We bless you in this place, oh God. Yes. Higher. Come on and lift. Everybody, come on, sing higher. Higher. Yeah. Come on and lift it. Come on and lift it. Yeah. Come Let me hear the voices sing. Higher and higher. Lift it, Zion. Come on and lift Come on and lift Sing with me. Higher and higher. And higher. Yeah. Come on and lift Come on and lift Higher and higher. Come on and lift 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 him high. It's great and mighty. Come on, just lift him high. Come on. Exalt him, lift him high with your worship, with your praise on today. Yes. Hallelujah. You're so good to us, oh God. There's nobody like you. Come on, keep praising him. Keep lifting him. He's worthy. Because there's nobody like him. Hallelujah. Death couldn't stop him. The grave can defeat him. He's worthy. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's so worthy, God. Strong and mighty are you. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name. Your name is strength. Your name is power. A strong tower. Makes me say, Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name? Your name is strength, your name is power. A strong tower makes me say, Come on, sing, oh Lord, sing, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent yes. is your name? Your name is strength. Your name. A strong tower makes me sane. Can you sing, oh Lord? Whoa! There's nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. That's it. 
You go, who wouldn't serve him? Hallelujah. Say, who wouldn't pray? Has God like that? Oh, oh, nobody like you. Nobody like you. Come on, let me hear your worship. Yes, sir. That said, hallelujah. hallelujah. You tell them how. Well, there's nobody like him to you. Come on, lift him up. Come on, exalt him. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Just come on, hallelujah. It's very fitting, hallelujah. That I have another opportunity to say, God, there's nobody like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I have to shake myself free in this place, I'm declaring that there's nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, sing your own song. Sing your own song to the Lord. Nobody sounds like you lift your nobody. Nobody likes you. No matter how you sound, when you sound good to God, lift your voice and cry out in your own way, sing. Has he been a healer to you? Yes. Has he been a keeper for you? Yes. Hallelujah. Has he brought you out of nowhere? Hallelujah. Yes, to has. some place. Amen. Yes. Have the Lord hallelujah, always guided your footsteps. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says yes. that the footsteps, hallelujah, of yes. a righteous man, hallelujah, of a righteous woman are ordered by God. Hallelujah. We bless your name on today. Hallelujah. Now, can we give God a thunderous praise in the house? 
Come on, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, hallelujah. If I had to count down, hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, O oh God. Bless your name. Before we go any further, we're going to take this time out to um, have a, a reason why we're here. We're here to serve God, amen? Yeah. We're here to serve God, amen, because he is God, amen? Yeah. But we're also here today to celebrate the man of God. Can we give God praise for Reverend Shuford, amen, on this pastor's appreciation day? Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. So today is all about him. Amen. Hallelujah. Our scripture lesson this morning will be coming from Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Very familiar. Reading from the New Living Translation. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows and he leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. And when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare, O oh God, a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil, and my cup overflows with blessings. Verse 6 says, Surely your goodness and your unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. The word of God for the people of God. Now we will be favored in prayer by none other than Reverend Gracie Martin. If our hearts are clear. There are so many things on this list for her to pray for. I figured I'd better say this rather than pass them the list. We've had a big week of losses, of people in the hospitals. Ms. Gordine, is there somebody sitting next to you? I want you to stand up and give God some thunderous praise because Roger Gordine is in the sanctuary. So I want you to stand up today. Come on, I want you to stand up. I want you to stand up and tell God thank you today. Come on, come on, act like he's your own son. Stand up and tell God thank you today. Thank him for miracles that he's still working. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I can't hear you. Somebody shout, hallelujah. I can't hear the people of God. Somebody shout, hallelujah. 
you can be seated. I just wanted to do that because God deserves extra. Because at the end of worship, he was passing out in another worship experience. And we stood right here and prayed until somebody said, he's come back too. You get it? Maybe that's not as important as to you as it is to Mrs. Gordine and the rest of us who have loved him. But when God hears you, you ought to give him a little extra. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Mrs. Mary Ware needs your prayers. Reverend Sandra Ware's mom experiencing some new challenges. And so I want you to pray for them. And of course, uh, our treasurer, our church treasurer, Reverend, Reverend Mrs. Von Seal Love, Kimberly and JC. Because uh, yesterday was a hard day for us. She lost her husband. They lost their father. With Anderson, we thank God had an accident, is in the hospital. But guess what? God is so good. He's not hurt. The wreck didn't do any damage. God is awesome. You didn't say a word. If I, if I was reporting on your own child or your own sibling, what would you have done right then? You got to remember, that's one of our strong trustees and a son of God. What a joy it is to just see him functioning and talking as usual. Don't forget Mary Brown and her family. That's real new. Sometimes we forget in the bereavement process, it's not an overnight situation. People have got to go through this the rest of their lives, missing somebody that's very significant in their family. I want you to pray for my brother-in-law, Reverend Frank Bozeman. You have a group of people to pray for, Reverend Martin, who need healing. He's fighting for his life. Uh, Pastor McCoy, uh, who once right at this altar, uh, joined the AME Zion Church. He later left, uh, was a Baptist preacher, gone on to be with the Lord last week, early not even 60 years of age. Pray for his family. Uh, Reverend George Garrison's mom, who is in the hospital at Jackson. Uh, Mrs. Lucille Jackson's family. She's gone on to be with the Lord. Uh, the McCants and Booker family uh, in the loss of Lucille, who uh, periodically would be by this church and by the Zion Center. Uh, I want you to pray for Bishop Crenshaw's left side. Uh, he's in therapy, but the mobility in that leg, the muscle is not working. He said the best way to describe that is like driving a car without power steering. How many of you have done that before? The old older crowd know what it's like to drive a car without power steering. I'll help the young folk. That means it's very hard to turn that wheel. It's not like power steering. You can turn it with your finger, Lucille, but those of us who've driven one without power steering, you got to hold that thing with both hands to turn it. And so we want to pray that God will release that muscle and reactivate that muscle. It's on the left side so that every time he walks, uh, it's a challenge, all right? Uh, I've got that one already, all right? Uh, we want to continue to pray for Roger Gordine that God will give him healing in that body. He's present today because he wanted to thank God, I'm sure. Uh, the Hendricks and Jackson, that's in uh, Brother Elton Dean's wife's family have death, their uncle, uh, Mr. Hendricks, that I'm going to bury on uh, Saturday in Wetumpka. That's my father and my uncle's good friend. Uh, Reverend Arlene Henderson has new challenges. I remember in Memphis, Tennessee, and so we want to pray for Reverend Arlene Henderson. And then Sister Beverly Savage, whose oldest sister uh, left and went to be with the Lord. She's just around my age and has been fighting uh, for her life for at least a couple of years. You know, you get to retirement and you retire and then you, they discover you've got a brain tumor, an inoperative tumor. And so for the last two or three years, we've been struggling with that with Sherry Hobby. 
And so I want you to pray for her husband and her two grown boys, our sons, uh, and the Ferris family, Miss Ida Ferris, the mama, and the rest of the siblings who are suffering another great loss. And so, Reverend Martin, as we reclean this microphone, I'm not expecting you to remember these 10,000 names, but if you pray for healing uh, and for the, it'll be all right. Praise the Lord anyway. Let's praise the Lord anyway. There are so many things to be thankful for, even in listening to that list. And so we want you to prepare your hearts now for prayer. And I want you to just consider those names that were called, those situations that were called. And even though I might not be able to remember every one of them, there is an assurance that the Lord heard and knows all about it. Let us pray. Lord God, we do praise you. And our faith looks up to you because there is none like you. There is none who can heal the sick, who can raise the dead, who can save our souls, Lord, from so much evil and make us ready for your kingdom. There is no one else like you. And so for that, we just say our faith looks up to you because you are the one who can help us. There's no one else who can without your help. We thank you, O Heavenly Father, for our pastor and for his tenure here. We thank you, O Heavenly Father, for his steadfast love, his steadfast work in your kingdom. We just praise you, Lord, for keeping him healthy and strong that he may continue to do the work of the ministry. We thank you for his family and for the support he has, Lord, in his family with his wife, uh, Reverend Brenda, and his children and his brothers and sisters and other persons in his family. We just say thank you, Lord. We thank you for Mount Zion today, for the ministry that we are able to share with so many people. We praise your holy name, Lord, for technology that can help us to get your word out all over this nation. We praise your holy name, Lord. And then, oh, Heavenly Father, we want now to turn to you for our health petitions. For all those names and situations that Reverend Schufer mentioned, Lord, we're not even going to begin to name them because someone will feel left out. But there is one thing about it, Lord, as we declared before. You heard those names. You knew their situations before they were even presented here. But because you have given us the privilege of praying to you and coming to you boldly now to your throne of grace, we lay these names and situations at your altar for healing, for deliverance, for comfort. We also claim economic advancement, Lord, for those who are struggling financially. We pray for mental health among us, Lord. We just lift up all of our petitions to you. And we give you the praise and the glory. We ask your blessings upon our preacher for today. And oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. And the church said, amen, amen, amen. I wanted to present the preacher today because of his significance uh, in my own life. Uh, of course, I'm older. You can probably see that much, uh, which means he's 
uh, hadn't been around quite as long as me. Uh, our preacher in the form of Reverend Dr. Myron O. Smoke was born in uh, Wetumpka, Alabama to my first cousin, Robert George, who was named after my daddy and to his mom, uh, Alice Smoke. Uh, I think somewhere around 55 years ago, something like that. That's close enough, isn't it? That is not close enough? Okay, close enough. So that meant he was one of my young cousins running around. I didn't beat him up because I didn't do cousins like that. Uh, he graduated from Wetumpka High School, a football player, which I was not, a basketball player, which I was better than him. Uh, but he's a very dear cousin. He says to me all the time, make sure you tell people I'm your favorite cousin. And on the male side, that's true. But I'm not going to rank him as number one because Lois Crenshaw is a member of Mount Zion. And he left Zion and went to his mama's church, the Baptist church. He had choices. He was raised in Mount Zion Chapel, AME Zion, and Mount Zion Elmore. Uh, and so he's got a good mixture. I keep telling people, I'm not just AME Zion. More of my folk are Baptists than AME Zion. But I believe I was both born in Zion, called to Zion, and I chose Zion. And so uh, his roots are deep in our church. And I'm often teasing him, say, if you come on, I can give you an AME Zion church. But that was not what God had for him because he was, he's been the pastor of Jerusalem Baptist about 16 years. Is that right? 15, close to 16 years uh, coming. I remember, and this is good for younger preachers, Antonio Carter and Brother Paul Dean. He could have had a church sooner. Uh, and he didn't worry about that. We made him stay in classes. He came to Mount Zion's Bible study. He came to Mount Zion's preacher's classes. He, and he was working during the night, so he took his lunch breaks and took long breaks and came and sat in classes trying to get whatever he could to help develop him. And I remember uh, in a prophetic session in Good Hope Missionary Baptist Church when my sister was pastoring there, the, a prophet by the name of Robert Felder uh, prophesied over him. It was a powerful night uh, that night. My sister, Fergale, Reverend Fergale, he and Fergale were the two, I think the two out of the three main words received that night, how God was going to bless his life and change him and make him a pastor. I can't remember how many months later that Jerusalem Baptist called him. You know, sometimes... People just dismiss stuff because they don't have the spiritual gift. Turn to somebody and tell them, don't do that. Because every spiritual gift God has in the body of Christ, God still uses that gift by the power of the Holy Spirit. You might not appreciate the person, but don't disrespect the gift. And as God prophesied to him tonight, has not the Lord done everything and more in his life? And so I'm happy about that. He's gone on to study. I can't remember the school. It's a Presbyterian-based school and received his uh, doctorate degree and all of that kind of thing. He's married to Cynthia, uh, who's an Elmo County singer. And I won't impose on you this time, but the next time, I'm not going to allow it to get by. What a wonderful voice uh, from that sister. And uh, he's the parent of three children, grandchildren. I saw two sons. I don't know where they went. I guess they disappeared. Oh, they've gone to children's church. All right. And so Reverend Myron O. Smoke, my great friend, uh, my wonderful cousin, second place, my fishing buddy, we have a standing fishing appointment once a week, and I won't tell you what day that is because you can't go. You can't go on that one. That's a family thing, David Thomas. You have to wait your turn. 
He's coming to preach today. He asked me, what should I preach? What's the theme? And I said to him, the theme is preach. I don't care what the Lord gives you. You have no directives from the pastor of this church. I want you to come and preach. Uh, well, he had one directive. He asked me if he could holler, the Baptist preacher, you know. I said, if you don't hoop, I'm not going to pay you. You get no honorarium. If you don't, if you don't give me all you got, and I know what he's got. So if you don't do it, uh, you're not going to get an honorarium, not even lunch. So I told him I want the Baptist style. I don't want him to try to go back to his AME Zion roots. I want what he presents on Sunday morning at Jerusalem Baptist. And when you're in revival. He's my favorite aunt on my dad's side, grandson. There's so much more. I should tell you this. He went through a transformation. There was a time I wouldn't have ridden him in my car because he'd lost his way and he was rough. But it, he, is another, he is another example how God can take somebody who goes way over there, and I won't tell you what over there he is, but can change him and make him love the kingdom and how he would be bent on foolishness and I'm not taking any credit for that because I don't get any. I would give the credit to his mom and his wife and his late grandmom, Jenny Pearl Shuford George, who I know are in the gap and my late mom, praying that God would save him for the kingdom. You know God hears prayer. Can you shout hallelujah for that? And when I look at his life now and how God turned him 180 degrees and made that man love Jesus and made him a preacher of the gospel, you got to know God can do whatever God wants to do. Somebody shout, we had better pray. Hallelujah. I said I wouldn't serve the Lord. I don't know what he said. But God said, you will preach my gospel. And then just like that, here he comes. Can you imagine that? Running from the Lord, running from the church, and all of a sudden, taking two-hour lunch breaks to sit in my class on a Wednesday and on a Thursday. Can you imagine that? Isn't that baffling to you? God is somebody wonderful. And so I want you to pray for the Reverend Myron O. Smoke, uh, who comes to preach today. Come on over to your big chair, and we'll hear uh, from the choir. Maybe two selections, because you know that song you all were playing just before the introduction? Uh, I need to hear that song today. Reverend Christopher Gosby and the praise team are coming back.
Deserve the glory and the honor. I lift my hands in worship as I bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. I lift my hands and worship, and I bless your whole world. For you are great, you do miracles so great. For there's no one Eternal God, our Father, we are certainly thankful and we are certainly grateful for this, this preaching moment. 
even as we stand behind the sacred desk. Hide me now behind the cross. Cover me with your divine blood. The smoke will never stand in your way. But I pray that you will open listening ears and receiving hearts that we all shall be able to receive thine word. As your servant, I declare that your word shall go forth with the power that is able to break rocks into pieces. For you and you alone, call me for this assignment and for this cause. I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you, if it's all right, come on and let's put our hands together. Amen. And celebrate the name of the Lord. Amen. How many of us know he's worthy to be praised? Amen. If you know God has been good to you, come on and just open up your mouth and just give God a shout right there. Amen. That's all right. That's all right. Amen. Give God a shout right there. Amen. His name is worthy to be praised. And truly, we are grateful to the Lord for this awesome time of ministry and this awesome time of worship. Truly, we are honored and we're grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Mount Zion, good morning. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord and we give God thanks and praise. I want to certainly honor the Lord for this awesome leader. Amen. Who is no stranger. Amen. He, he is simply... Amen. He is simply a giant in his own time, and we are grateful to the Lord. Amen. For the life of Dr. Claude Shuford. Amen. Would you bless the name of the Lord for Dr. Claude Shuford? Amen. Amen. Couldn't we put a little volume with that? Amen. Just go ahead and open up your mouth and give God a hallelujah for the leader of this house. Amen. Truly, we are honored and we're grateful to the Lord. Amen. For what he displays through this awesome leader and to his wonderful family. We are grateful to the Lord for them. Amen. And I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely grateful and thankful to the Lord for my family. Amen. Give God a praise for them. Amen. We're honored and we're grateful to them. Listen, I'm just doing a few fillers real quick. Amen. Because I don't have, amen, a long sermon. Amen. As I always say, I'm not going to preach long. Amen. But I came to preach strong. Is that all right? Amen. Now, 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 Dean, if you don't say anything, I just want you to know I got my own amens in my pocket. Every now and then, amen. See, I had to pull one out right then. Amen. Amen. That's, that's two. I had to pull them out, amen, just in case you don't say anything, I brought them with me, amen. But I'm happy to be back at Mount Zion once again, amen. I want to say, share a couple of things real quickly before I go to the word of the Lord and honor, we honor the Lord for this awesome praise ministry, amen, that did so awesome, amen. Come on, give God a praise for them. I want to say I'm certainly grateful to Mount Zion because you have been such a blessing to us. Amen. Whether you know it or not, you have been certainly, you have certainly inspired us in our ministry for over 20 plus years. And we are grateful to the Lord for each of you. Amen. I sit right in this Bible study many nights and I just glean at all the excellent spirit that has gone through this place. And I'll just tell you, I'm still always in awe of what's going on at Mount Zion. It certainly inspires and it should push all of us to go to the next level in Christ. And then I'm in awe of all the ways of this giant of a preacher. Amen. This morning, it is something different for me because I'm standing in the shoes. Amen. Or in the shadow of a giant. Amen. In ministry, many, many times we don't, we take people lightly. Amen. Because he is my second cousin and amen. And many times we're together each week. Sometimes it's easy to take people lightly. Amen. But you've got to understand when God gives you a gift, you ought to be grateful. Somebody just shout out, I'm grateful. 
So, Dr. Claus Schufert, I won't, amen, do a lot of filler this morning because I know you don't like that. You, you, you've already instructed me to just preach. So I'll do just like I've been trained to do. I'll just preach. Amen. Romans chapter number one. Come on in. If you, those of you that have your Bibles with you, come on and travel with me to Romans chapter number one. Is that all right? Romans chapter one, I want to do four verses in our hearing. Amen. I want to chime in to verse number 16, but I want to start at verse 14. Is that okay? That's what you call rewinding and playing. Amen. Verse number 14 says, I am debtor both to Greeks and to the barbarians both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as I am in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Verse number 16 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation. To every creature, to everyone that believe it, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. Come on, look over to your left or to your right and look at your neighbor and uh, help me announce my text. I want to talk about after all of these years, what must I preach? After all of these years. What must I preach? Claude A. Schufer, born in Wetumpka, the youngest son of Reverend Cora and Brother Robert Schufer Sr. Called at 19 years old, here pastoring Mount Zion 34 years, preaching 42. This is the question that I want to pose to you, Claude A. Schubert. After all of these years, what must I preach? 30, 34 years preaching in the same mountain and to the same people. What must I preach? Seeing children grow up and moving on and having children and doing things of their own, and seemingly things are changing. We're living in a changing world that's always, amen, changing. And even in the midst of that, still, what must I preach? After people are going in and out, coming and going, going and coming, still, what must I preach? I know that's a question that's posing in all of our lives, brothers and sisters, because out of all the theology that is going forward, out of all the myths that are going forward, and out of all the schisms that are going forward, the, the real statement of the whole matter, the gospel still need to be preached. The gospel of Jesus Christ Brothers and sisters, 34 years in preaching in one mountain. I rewind and play because you didn't get it. 34 years preaching in one place. Preaching one place. Sometimes preaching to the same people and then people after people after people. People coming, people going. What still must I preach. 
having to preach to an ever-changing world and to a generation. And I come to share with your brothers and sisters out of all COVID have taught us, this seemingly must be the generation that ought to be changing. In this lifetime, we have seen things that happened that our parents did not see. We have experienced things that perhaps they have never experienced. And even in the midst of that, we're still the question, what must do? What is it that we really need to hear? Well, I come to tell somebody that's in this place, we still need to hear the gospel. Klaus Schufert, you told me in our talk, hey man, just preach. But I come to tell you, I come to add a few things to you. I didn't come just to preach theology. I didn't come just to preach philosophically or psychologically. I come to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because I heard Paul said, it is the power of God unto salvation. And that's why we preach. That's why we do what we do, not just for a check, not just for accolade, but even in the midst of our preaching and our persuasion that somebody might come and say, what must I do to be saved? Oh, my God, amen. I had to go ahead and use one right there because it just felt good. Just somebody say amen. Brothers and sisters, Claude and Schubert, can I tell you, amen, even in the midst of that, amen, there is a need for the preacher. The book goes on to say, how can we hear without the preacher? How can he preach a lesson he has been the sin. After, after 34 years, it is evidence that God has sent you. Amen. Out of all the things we have experienced, it is evidence that God has sent you. Amen. After seeing the old Mount Zion to the new Mount Zion to the life center to the Zion center, there's evidence that God has sent you. Oh, brothers and sisters, I come to share with you. That's what we need. We need to hear from the preacher. Oh, that's what Paul, he certainly admonishes us to appreciate the preacher. He goes on to say, muzzle not the ox. Amen. That's shredding out the corn. He ought to be able to live well. Amen. And ultimately, be well. I'm grateful of Mount Zion doing what you're doing because Mount Zion have always seen a need to set the preacher aside to be blessed. Somebody should have said something right there, brothers and sisters, because Mount Zion has been a pillar in this community. Amen. And I come to share with you, we couldn't have did it without the leadership, the God leadership of Claude A. Shuford. So Paul says to us, preach this gospel. Pastor, as long as there is sin in the world, there will always be a need for Claude A. Shuford. Amen. Long as there is sin in our communities, there will always be a need of a Claude Shuford. Long as segregation is going forward, there will still be a need for a Claude Schufer. Someone that will stand strong and stand tall and declare that the wages of sin is still death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Oh, I feel like preaching now for a moment, family. You don't mind if I just go ahead and be myself for a minute, do you? Because brothers and sisters, can I share with you? That's what uh, the apostle learned in his understanding of a man, even in preaching this gospel. I've got to understand that this gospel changes things. It not only changes things, but it changes 
people, brothers and sisters, might I share with you, Paul had to learn it the hard way. On his way, a man to condemn the church, that God, a man, inter intervened and told him to go a different way. And that's why Paul can write to the Romans. He writes to the Romans to say to us, Claude Anthony uh, A. Shufford, you got to preach, amen, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because there will come a time in Timothy when people would not endure sound doctrine. But they are having itching ears trying to do what they want to do. But I come to tell you, you got to stand firm in what you believe. And you got to declare to me and women, boys and girls, that the wages of sin is still death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Do I have a witness in this place? So sometime, Claude, you will be applauded, but you also will be shown in preaching this gospel. Sometimes congratulated and other times condemned. Come on back up, sound man, and help me here. A man sometimes appreciated and then other times whatever. Sometimes love and other times hate it. But all oh, pastor, can I tell you, as long as there, give me a minute here, as long as there, a man seeing in the camp, we've got to preach this gospel. What are you saying? I don't understand what you're saying. Come on, go back to the text with me for a minute. When Paul said it like this, I am a debtor, which means I am in death. Oh, what you saying, Smokey, is I owe him something. And that's what I want to tell somebody up in here. We owe the Lord our best. A person doesn't preach for 42 years and, and not a slave of the gospel. Now, don't take that slave thing, miss, uh, don't misunderstand that. Because this man have chosen to be a slave. Matter of fact, he signed up to be a slave. Lord, if you send me, I'll go. So after 42 years, uh, 34 years of pastoring Mount Zion, Claude Shuford, you are a slave of the gospel. What are you saying? Hey, Amen. You have been called to preach this gospel to every creature. That's what I love about it. I am a debtor. A person that's been preaching this long is now a man have been set aside to preach what God has given them. Paul is saying, I owe him my life and I have decided to serve him for the rest of my life. The second thing that I want to second bullet point, it is like this. Preaching the gospel cannot be partial. What are you saying, Smoke? That's what I love about this man. Whether you black, white, Jew, Gentile, Protestant, or Catholic, he have, he have developed that mold that he's going to preach this gospel. I'm reminded brothers and sisters he was sharing a story some time ago about an airplane ride that he was taking coming from annual conference and there was a young man on the plane that did not know Jesus and all Claude Shuford had the opportunity of, of introducing Jesus unto that young boy and that ought to help us right there preachers because every chance we get. We are to introduce Christ to the lost. Every chance we get, 
we ought to tell somebody of what great things that God did. Every chance we get, we ought to tell our testimony of how God brought us out of darkness until the marvelous light. I feel like preaching for a moment here. Brothers and sisters, can I share with you, Mary? Mary, Rebecca, oh, every now and then, we ought to lift up holy hands. I'm like my old grandmama now. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and what he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. When I think about how he's fed me, how he's brought me, how he's kept me, somebody shout out, he's never left me, never left me alone. I got to give him some praise right about there. Oh, brothers and sisters, this gospel cannot be partial. We cannot have particular people that we preach to. We can't have particular people that we won't save. Don't it, don't it just get on your nerve when you get, what, run across people that's so particular about everything? Listen, I'm you're so particular. I'm not going to try to fit in to your little club because you too particular and look like to me you eating the same food breathing the same air what in the world makes you any better than anybody else come on and somebody talk to me in this place we can't be so particular and all brothers and sisters can I just throw this one in I know what I know Lord have mercy. Well, preacher, what do you know? Well, out of all uh, that I've seen, out of all that I've dealt with, out of all the people that have impacted my life, I've got to share with you. I hadn't met nobody that's better than Jesus. Anybody here know Jesus? My rock of ages. All right, sound man, I'm ready now. Anybody here know Jesus? That lily of the valley, that bright and morning star. Anybody here know that he's a way maker? He's a promise keeper. Anybody go ahead and shout out. He's a light in the darkness. That's who he is. That's who he is. Lady Smoke, can I tell you, I have found him to be a friend that's never a man that's sticking closer than a brother. I have found out that Jesus is all I need. Three things I see in the text, and I'll make for him the first First thing that I see in the text is why I love this gospel because it reveals to me. Do you know that's what revelation is? You know the last book in the Bible. I mean Genesis and then revelation is on the end. Oh, you'll get it in a minute. Brothers and sisters, what revelation simply means. It means God revealing himself to me. And that's what I love about this gospel because this gospel uh, that I'm reading that I'm living uh, it reveals God to God to me uh, his sovereign and his power uh, that he's El Elyon uh, El Shaddai uh, he's all sufficient all knowing all can and all will uh, oh, somebody just shout out God uh, our brothers and sisters not only uh, do he reveals himself to me uh, he keeps on revealing himself to me over and over and over. Oh, you, you need an example, don't you? All right, here I come. Brothers and sisters, he woke me. It clothed in my right mind. Somebody shout out, reveal. He gave me a reasonable portion of my health and strength. Somebody shout out, reveal. He enabled me to come across uh, over the river and come 
to Mount Zion and found out that he is still in the blessing business. Because when I look at you, I see God's greatest masterpiece, which reveals to me that he's still in the blessing business. And just because you don't said nothing, it still don't make God to be what he already is. What is he, smoke? When I come to announce to you, just in case you didn't know that he is still God. Our brothers and sisters, not only that, not only that, not only that, but he reveals to me of who I am. Mm. All because the fact of the whole matter I did not know who I was, but now I know who I am. I don't need you telling me who I am. And what you say don't make me who I am. I'm not worried about mama, daddy, sister, brother. I found out for myself that Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of a storm. I found out he's all that I need. Our brothers and sisters, so I know who I am. Genesis declares, in the beginning, God created man in his own image and after his likeness. He created he, him, and all, and he gave me dominion over everything everything. And he told me to go, yes, go and reproduce and all heart and go ahead and bless the city. Bless this entire world. Brothers and sisters, you've got to know who you are. You were created in God's image. And I don't care how crazy you might be acting. I don't care how far away you have gotten from the Lord. He is still waiting there calling you saying come back come back to reality come back to your first love you've got to come back into your original state and act like you supposed to be acting oh I've been there before even though I was created in into character. I step back into power. I step back into my destiny. And I had to learn that my destiny was not dead, but it was still alive. I come to share with somebody up in this place that you, you seem like your destiny don't seem to be end up to the brother that was sick for so long. Your destiny seemed to be running out. But I come to tell your God is evidence. He reveals himself to you. Oh, he illuminated his power in his glory in your life. You know, can I tell you how much of illumination it is? It's so illuminating that we see you with our natural eyes. That's enough to give God praise. Our oh, brothers and sisters, that's how powerful God is. He sometimes has have to reveal himself to us, number one, but then number two is he reveals to us who we are. And then lastly, brothers and sisters, he reveals my destiny. What are your destiny, smoke? I am a preacher of the gospel. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about my occupation. I'm talking about who I'm called to be. I'm a preacher of the gospel. Where you was a man before you was a preacher, the devil is a liar. I come to tell you in my mother's wounds had he already ordained me to preach this gospel. Oh, I feel like going to the mountaintop now. Brothers and sisters, can I tell you that even in the midst of, uh, of my destiny, I've got to learn that my destiny is not dead, but my destiny is alive. There are souls waiting on me. There are people needing my assistance.
There are people needing my voice. There are people needing to hear this word. There are people depending on me. And you can't get to where you need to be until you learn how to hook up with the right folks. That's why I hooked up with Shufa. Not because we are blood, because of the anointing that's on his life. When I was a young preacher 20 plus years ago, I wanted to pray like him. I wanted to act like him. I wanted to preach like him. And I heard God said, be yourself and just do like you do. Because can't nobody beat you being you. Come on, that's for somebody out there. You already 60 years old and still trying to be like somebody else. Baby, sit your old self down and just be yourself. Can't nobody do this thing. You mean to tell me God made a mistake? No, he did not. He created you just like he wanted you. And I don't care whether you tall, short, fat, or skinny. God already knows. Come on, smoke, and help me close in this thing. Because brothers and sisters, might I tell you the last thing, Claude? Oh, can I tell you like I need to tell you? What must I preach after all of these years? Oh, that's what I want to say right there. Oh, that's my get off right there. After all of these years, what must I preach? That's my get off right there, organ man. After all of these years what must I preach when I come to tell you what pastor told me Claude A. Shufert preach the gospel whether you sing the gospel uh, smoke when I come to tell you the gospel still saves the gospel still delivers the gospel still set free so after all of these years 42 years of preaching what must I preach? Been in Mount Zion 34 years. What must I preach? I know, Shufert, that sometimes it's a dark story, but I got to tell you the truth. Every now and then, you've got to take them back to Jerusalem. They tell me, good morning, brothers. Good morning, my sisters. I'm almost out of here now. But they tell me that they took him out the back gates of Jerusalem and they led him up the Delarosa, up a hill called Calvary, and right there, Shufut, they crucified my Savior in my gods. They tell me that they laid him down on an old rugged cross, and they put nails in his hands, and they put spikes in his feet. And they tell me that they lifted him up because I heard, I heard, I heard somebody say that they heard Jesus when he said these words. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. I'm feeling all right now. Just give me a few more more minutes I will draw all minions unto me they tell me Shufert, that he hung between two thieves I'm talking about the man in the middle kept on hanging to the sticks to the ninth hour and they tell me he hung his head after he gave up the ghost and he died until heaven was satisfied. They tell me Joseph of Amethyst begged for his body and they took him down and put him in a tomb. But that's not how the story ends. They tell me that he went to the underworld and began to preach. Reverend, I 
don't know what the man preached but if it was me this is what I would have preached whosoever will let him come Abraham start getting up Isaac and Jacob Joseph and Judah Habakkuk and Abraham Abram and Joseph Moses and Joshua they tell me Malachi and Amos Joel and Abaka start saying to themselves some glad morning when this life a mind is over feel like flying flying away and be at rest but wait a minute that's not how the story ends because they tell me when the blood starts screaming down the earth start bubbling start busting open they tell me the sun refused to shine they tell me that the moon dripped down in blood anybody know the story they tell me that somebody on the side says surely 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 this got to be the son of God they tell me that when he put him in a bar it soon they tell me he stayed there three days and three nights as a sign of Jonah say if the son of man be in the ground early. Sunday morning Sunday morning Sunday morning Sunday morning Jesus my rock of ages Jesus my lily of the valley Jesus I feel all right now Jesus the more I call him Jesus oh Lord Jesus anybody here know him don't fool me brother don't fool me sister is it anybody over here that knows Jesus Jesus, I wish I had a witness. I know y'all dignified. I know y'all Christians, but let me go to top flight. Oh, oh Lord, have mercy. I done lost everybody. That they do it in the flight. If you really know him, wave your hands in the air. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Look like I got some flight goers here. Wave them like you just don't care. If you don't mind, look at that neighbor and said, neighbor, he's sweet, I know. And the reason I know, I don't try him and he's a way maker. God bless you. After all of these years, what must I preach? And the answer is, just preach the gospel. After all of these years, what must I preach? Come on, shout back at me. Somebody said, preach the gospel. It still works. It still works. It still works. Just preach the gospel. Father, we give you thanks for the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to him that believeth. And even in this moment, as we open up our mouths and confess you as our Savior, believing in our heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, your word declares, thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth confession is made, with the heart man is made to believe. 
We pray now, Lord, that you will sanctify our souls to the truth. You commission our ways to hold the plow and to never look back. Bless us as we go forward for the journey that's continuously to lies ahead. Bless our efforts. Bless our hearts. That you may be glorified, the enemy horrified, and the people of God edified. We speak it now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you this morning. All oh, brothers and sisters, certainly there, the doors of the church is open. There perhaps may be somebody that's in this place that don't know the Lord as their Savior. And there is room at the cross, that even though millions have come. My brother, my sister, there is still room. Will there be one that will walk out on the word of the Lord? That will come and say, I don't know him, but I need to know him. Not only that, Reverend, I don't know him, but I know him, but my faith has gotten weak. We want to pray with you right now. My faith has gotten weak along the way. We offer Christ to you. And even though millions have come, there is still room. Shall we all stand? There is still room. There is still room. Come to Jesus while the blood is running warm in your vein. God bless you. God keep you. We're gonna, we're gonna intercede. We can keep standing, and we're gonna pray for a young man, Kingsley Brown. We're gonna ask that you stay where you are. Don't leave yet. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. He's bleeding out of his nose, and so they're rushing him to Birmingham. So we're gonna just intercede and pray. Father, we thank you, God, that you said in your word that by your stripes we are healed. We're declaring in faith, Lord God, that you will intervene right now, Lord God. And Brother Brown, hallelujah, God, will be healed because of your stripes, Lord God. Your word, God said, it will not come to you void. We believe and we stand firm in that he will have the testimony that God did. We thank you, God, that you're right now turning it around, God. We right now ask God that you will stop the blood, hallelujah, from running out of his nose, God. I pray that God, you will have whatever the need is, God, that you will give it, God. We stand, God, in agreement right now that by your stripes, we call Kinsley healed. By your stripes, we called him delivered. By your stripes, we said they won't have to make it to Birmingham because you had already turned it around, God. We're declaring in faith that it is so. That it is so. That it is so, God. That it is so. That it is so, God. That it is so, God. That you are healing right now, God. That you are interceding right now. God, that the blood has stopped flowing right now. That he is healed right now. That he is delivered right now, God. We stand, hallelujah, believing in faith in you, God. That you can do all things but fail. God, we declare that it is so. That it is so. And God, we wait for the re report that you turned it around. We wait for the report that you turned it around. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is so in faith that we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God praise for the report that he's already, that he's healed, hallelujah, that he's delivered, that everything is working for him, hallelujah. We're getting ready to, weren't you blessed today? Weren't you blessed, hallelujah? Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise for the word of God, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
I think we're off the air, but sit on Facebook. So I don't know what's next as far as the program for the pastor's appreciation. But if those who are in charge would come. Brother Henry, will you come? Brother Henry? He's coming. Just sing with me. Total praise Brother Harry? Good afternoon, uh, Mount Zion. Uh, this is uh, the day that we are honoring our pastor, appreciation. So I'm calling on all the uh, boards, clubs, and organizations here at the church. Anyone like to say anything or present uh, any uh, love offerings for him can uh, now come and present those. Do I have any? Any clubs? Boards, you like to say something? As the uh, preacher stood, the uh, steward board has presented him with this gift. He will receive that. It's in the basket. Just want to thank you for your service. Good morning. Good morning. This comes from Christian Ad. I think we've said quite a lot and what we needed to say in our promotion to each other and our friends, to the Schubert family, led by this godly man, Reverend Pastor Claude Schubert. We just want to say thank you, bless you all, and you go Christian educator, okay, from the Christian education department. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Reverend Schubert and family, I want to let you know that the herds love you. Since 1999, 1999 to 2021, you've been an inspiration for our family. And we truly love you with that. We truly love you. And this is from me and my husband and family and the Urshan. And thank you all so much for everything. Uh, we do have a basket outside as you exit, if you care to uh, contribute. Uh, and also, uh, is there anyone else, any other clubs, organizations? Yes, ma'am. Wait a minute, let me bring this to you. Praise the Lord, saints of God. I'm just a visitor. I've uh, heard Pastor Shuford over the airways and truly Mount Zion, Zion twice. Y'all have a man sent from the Lord. And I truly, have been blessed. He's a, a, a giant in this city, all over the world now, my Zion. 
My word for Mount Zion, appreciate who God has sent here. The anointing of the Lord is on this house. And, and where the spirit of the Lord is, that's where I want to be. So today, Pastor, I would like to sow a seed into you and your family. I mean, you can go to dinner. Uh, I, I just thank God for you and your family. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else I'd like to say something? Okay. All right. Yes. Reverend Smoke, I really enjoyed this sermon. I was telling Reverend, I guess a couple of weeks ago that you came and uh, preached about the wine man, the winos, how they share. They do better than us, they share their bottle. So I remember that, but uh, I'm not his second cousin, I'm not his first cousin, but I sure can claim that he and I have been friends ever since he's been here in Mount, in Mount Zion and in Montgomery. Yeah, we pray together, we fish together, we just do a lot of things together. But uh, he married one of my favorite people. So I, I, I love this family, I love him. And uh, the evangelist, the fact that she said it all. Every time I get a chance to, to showcase revelation, that I do. Everybody called on, uh, what's the man that do the bathroom, Jordan. They called on Nellis, they called on uh, Wealth, they called on everybody but they have not heard this man here. So every time I get a chance, I put him in front of Montgomery. So they'll know what we got here in Montgomery, at Mount Zion. And we're going to continue to do that. We love you. Uh, the trustee board, the one trustee, you know who we talk about, just said she's my friend. With the uh, appreciation on the low world, you say we didn't have any, but say put it in your hand. I told her to give, it, give the money to you. She said that. So I'm gonna give the money to you. <laughs> thank you for what you thank you for your service, Brenda. Anybody else want to say anything? Michael? Just want to thank you, Reverend Schufer. You are truly a man of God, and we are so blessed year after year after year. It is so amazing to see you continue to do what you do after all of these years. And you just continue to bless us. You encourage us, you bless us with the word because you bring the word. It may not be what we wanna hear, but you bless us with what is the word, the true word of God. We thank Reverend Brenda and the family for sharing you with us. We thank you, Reverend Brenda, for being here and playing for us. You all are such a blessing. I am so grateful and I'm so thankful because you have blessed me and my family and this congregation. Would there be anyone else? Let's stand to our feet and give God praise. Another hand clap of praise for this family. Come on. Come on, Mount Zion. For the service, for the prayers, for their love, and that God will continue to bless them. Amen. Is there anything else before we dismiss for the hearing? That's all. So we're going to ask that you would give your tithes. On the way out, and we're going to ask that Pastor Smoke bless the offering and give the benediction. Truly, we have been blessed in this place, and we are grateful and we're thankful. Once again, Pastor Schufer, thank you for the invitation to come to Mount Zion. Mount Zion, thank you for receiving us. We are certainly grateful, and I'm evangelist. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like you. This guy is a giant not only in the city of Montgomery, but the world. I don't know if you remember years ago, 
uh, we was in a prophetic conference and and one of the prophets got up and said, the name Claude A. Schufer will be a household name. And it is now, it is so, amen, it's all over the world and we're truly blessed. The whole family is just gifted and blessed and we are certainly thankful, amen, for what this family displays. There's not many times that you see the whole family standing together, amen, showing a unified front. And we're certainly thankful for them. Amen. If all else, all hearts and minds are clear, are we, are we done? Amen. We want to say on behalf of me and the Smoke family, uh, we brought you a love token and he told me not to do that, do this, but we're, we're just obedient to the Lord. We brought you a love token. Amen. To say that we love you and we appreciate you. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, Pastor Shuford. Good morning, Mount Zion. Congratulations, Pastor Shuford, for being a um, diligent, consistent soldier, and um, and for shifting in this in this pandemic um, and shifting ministry and shifting how ministry is done and thankful for the church who has shifted right along especially music ministry shifted everything is shifted and we've all been shifting together and god is good we thank god for his blessings his mercy thank you reverend smoke for ministering to us this morning thank you mount zion for all you do not only today but always god bless you thank you so much good morning what a joy it is to serve you. I thank God for you. <laughs> Apostle Paul said it this way, Pastor Smoke. He said, I'll always mention you in my prayers. With thanksgiving to the almighty God, I serve you. Sometime I'm a little... I'm a little concerned because I'm having so much fun now, CP. I hope I'm not dying because I'm having so much fun. And I, I think so often I've heard, and I know my cousin has heard it, preachers are complaining so much. And I'm just thanking God because I'm having so much fun and getting so much joy out of my sermon. Yes, I do get tired, but I'm getting tired having fun. And when you get tired having fun, the only thing you want to do is get some rest and have some more fun. Is that Jabari? You played basketball and you got tired, but you couldn't wait to start the next day. And that's kind of where I am now in ministry. You know, Funerals are very tiring for me. When I finish a funeral, it's like all my energy is gone. And yesterday after the funeral, after being in the home and it was hard, Von Seal said, I'm having a hard day. Kimberly was having a hard day. That's before we left the house. Then we made it over and we got through the service. I had three people in the hospital, my brother-in-law fighting for his life, my older sister's husband, and Willie Anderson had had an accident, and Reverend Garrison, my best friend's mama, was in the hospital, and I spent almost three hours at the hospital, uh, two hours plus. And I felt so drained. But yeah, I started thinking, I thank God, because you know, I always replay when I was playing ball, Jabari and Reverend Smoke, no matter how tired I was, I was looking forward to the next day to do the same thing over again. And if I can do that for something that has no eternal merit, can I not do it for the kingdom? 
Is the kingdom not worth it? Roger, I don't ever want to get to the point, as some seniors have said, I've done enough. Can we ever do enough for Jesus? As long as there's breath in our bodies, soundness in our minds, as another person said to me this morning, mama's memory now is challenged. As somebody else said, Alma, for somebody we know well, a few weeks ago said she's not remembering now. So when you call her, understand you may not get the same thing. As long as God's doing this for us, let's do all we can for him. Let me thank, and they are not present today. We did make a shift. COVID made us go social media. It also made us do more things on the radio. Brother Alfonso Patterson and Doris Patterson Brother Afonso was the one who came to me. He's not our member. He's a member of Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, a very faithful member of Bethel, Reverend Smoke. But you know, he comes to Mount Zion every week. Comes to Bible study faithfully every Wednesday morning, takes his notes. And he said at the outset of COVID, this really blessed me. He said, Reverend Shuford, do we have to give up our Wednesday morning study just because we can't come? We don't want to give up our Bible study. He said, my wife and I are going to pay for the first month. And probably some other folk will pay for some months. You know how much that blessed me? To hear this man old enough to be my father. Literally old enough to be my father. You'd never know it by his movements saying we want to have Bible study, that one man's idea led to three more radio broadcasts. And people have helped us to pay for it. It's amazing to me. That kind of stuff, Brenda Carvin, it just takes me to another place. I got out of my young cousin's funeral. He's 36. I won't be too long. Getting ready to go, bury in heaven to bury another 36 year old cousin, Reverend Smoke's first, first cousin. And a lady walks up to me with an envelope and says, my sister's classmate from Wetumpka, and says, I listen to you every week. And here's a seed, $200. So keep the radio ministry going. You know how much of a blessing that is? I went down to Pierce's to get some food. Now, Pierce's is my favorite country cooking place. Okay, they got some items I really love. I don't like all the items. I just love some of the items. So I go to get my favorite items, like their yams are the best I know about. Okay, they don't serve them every day, so you got to go in the day to serve them. And Mrs. Mama Pierce says, Reverend Shuford, man, we shall be looking forward to the teaching. We got the, got the radio going on while they're serving people. And she posted my picture up in there, and I was just, I said, Miss Pierce, what is this? She said, that's because we listen to the radio. I said, well, Mrs. Pierce, my 40th anniversary is over. She said, I know that, but I'm leaving the picture up. I said, well, put the broadcast times up to the end. She said, put it up there. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Reverend Smoke, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. So whatever we can do to keep the gospel going, Mount Zion, let's do it. It's my privilege to be the principal person to do it, but I like the fact the CP's class is on Zoom. I love it. I like the fact that Faye Henry created something for children every Sunday morning. And that Dorothy Johnson was willing to have a group discussion with youth. Not getting a lot of people to answer, but we better, we better, better wake up and, and smell the coffee. 
Because if the children and youth grow up without a solid foundation, they're more susceptible to believe something they shouldn't believe when they get to college. Ask me how I know. After seven years, I experienced everything. I was never one time tempted to leave Jesus. Nothing was attractive. No matter how many religions I had to study, I knew who Jesus was, and I knew what my foundation was. And I didn't get my foundation at Huntington and Emory. I got my foundation in Sunday school in a little country church where mom carried us and instilled in us the word of God is true. We had to know the basics. I want to say to you, tell your children, grand, most of you, your grandchildren, yeah, we got to get them back in. Got to be somebody else on that youth line uh, with Kay and with uh, Aaliyah Johnson, about the only two who had any consistency on the line. That's foundational. They do have questions. They do have concerns and they don't know the answers. So if we don't provide that for them, and the same is true for Faye Henry's class, if we don't provide it for these little kids, like Reverend Smoke's grandchildren here, who's going to provide it? They get everything on TV. Despicable stuff. Got to monitor every single thing that comes over. Because America has now declared it's normal to be gay or lesbian. Are we going to teach them what the Bible says? Or are we going to teach them what society says? It's a big deal. I'm not going to be ashamed, Reverend Smoke, whether I'm popular or unpopular. I'm going to say what the Bible says because the Bible declares this. The day would come, and you said it in the sermon, where people will not endure sound doctrine. They want things that sounds good to their ears and that will suit their own fancies, their own desires. So it's incumbent upon us. Thank you. Did you know that the radio ministry has given about, we received about $23,000 from your gifts and we needed it because it costs that much when you're broadcasting twice on Sundays, twice on Wednesdays, and then on Fridays. That's two and a half, almost three times what we normally receive. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that exciting? That's keeping ministry going. I was thinking at one point, I said, well, maybe I'll just broadcast every day. And I was sitting eating breakfast at Reverend Marcus Plump's. And Marcus looked at me and said, Reverend, you have to do more than teach. You're going to wear yourself out. I'm going to have to go back and tell my friend, I think the three days are enough. Because <laughs> as soon as you finish one, you got to get ready for the next one. The Lord's board was dropping off her tithes and offerings yesterday through the mail slot, like you do, Julius, every week. And this is exciting to me. Because some people, they're not going to do Giblified Cash App. They're going to do what Julius Boyd does. Raise your hand, Julius, so I'm smoking over where you are, please. Clockwork. He brings his to the church. If I'm in the office, he never knocks on the door. I never hear it anyway, Julius. So rings the doorbell, and I come out. His offering envelope is there, his tithe weekly, and his offerings. So yesterday, his sister was doing that, and she said, wait a minute. Let me put my mask on and get a hug. She said, now, when are you going to get some rest? That's Dolores Rose Boyd. I said, as soon as annual conference is over, I got seven or eight days on my mind. Now, Cynthia, you're going to have to work with me that week because I got a little lake over in Georgia with Mr. Elton Bruce that he's invited me to. 
you gonna let him go with me? Thank you so much. I thought, thought if I asked you in front of the whole church, you would do it. <laughs> have fun. Serve the Lord, have fun, because we're not gonna always get this chance. Somebody said this to me and I'm, I'm finished. I know we're supposed to have a drive by. Uh, most folk have already driven by, I think. Uh, they're waiting. Okay, I got to go now. They have some money out there. <laughs> so have fun. Somebody said this. Why are you, a member in our talks, why are you waiting around to do some things that you can do now? as if you just know you're gonna be able to do them 20 years from now. Why are you waiting to do that? So have some fun doing good godly things while you can, because life is uncertain. I got a little bucket list, but I'm not flying overseas right now. My bucket list is basically overseas. I just want to see the pyramids. I've been close to them, but I was on a mission trip, an evangelism trip, and we couldn't see the pyramids. We were so close, but the, the roots weren't going that way. You know, you got your bucket list, so enjoy the things you can while you can, cause they're not guaranteed. You know who told me this? He's sitting, he's standing back there with the tray in his hand, Brother Stoudemire. He told me about what he wanted to do in places he'd been, Super Bowls and all this. You thought I wasn't listening, right? I was listening well. And so you do those things that you get the great excitement out of because you work hard and there's no guarantee that you're going to have all these extra years and good health to do things way down the road when you can now. Thank you, Reverend Smoke. I guess I'm going to give you the check today. If I could hoop like he could, I would, but I can't do it. I, I used to practice coming from Emory. Does that make any sense? You should have heard me in the car sometime. I'd be by myself and alone. I would be trying hard. And it didn't even sound good to me. All right. Good day. Rev Smoke gives the benediction. And God bless you. Father, we thank you for this time and for this moment. Thank you for the gifts that have certainly been received. We thank you for our tithes and our offering. We pray your blessings to continue to be upon them, that it may upbuild your kingdom. We ask all of this now in your son Jesus' name. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with our people now and forevermore. And all the people of God lifted up their voices by saying, Amen. God bless you.